Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about freeways, driving safely on freeways because next week is American Thanksgiving and Good Friday. You'll be traveling to see friends and family and loved ones because, you know, we have a little bit of freedom after COVID. Not entirely, but we're almost there. Stick around. We'll be right back with that information. Welcome back, talking to you tonight about freeways, driving safely on freeways, driving high at higher speeds. What is the difference between highways and freeways, as Mallory just asked, because there is a difference. And fan, no, it's not speed, as some people might think, although there generally tend to be higher speeds on freeways, but not as a rule. Uh, Bricks for Wheels, that's Corey. Corey is here. And Mallory, my friend Mallory from the Maritimes is here, Evan is here, and Mick Mac is here as well, a few other people. And I'm sure as we get going here, there'll be a few other people tuning in to tonight's live stream. As I mentioned in the introduction, uh, the week after next is American Thanksgiving for our friends to the south. And as well, it'll be Black Friday the following <laughs> Friday afterwards, which is, you know, crazy time and epitomized by uh, the show... Superstore? Is it called Superstore? No, it's not called Superstore. It's called something else. But anyway, you know, <laughs> might as well be Superstore. They make fun of Walmart. Anyway, my friend Tim is here as well with Drive Smart BC. Make sure you head over to Tim's website if you have any questions about driving, traffic safety, court cases here in the province of British Columbia as well. He has an excellent forum over there where his community discusses these different types of issues and those types of things. So here we are, uh, Jassy is here, Xander's here as well. And uh, I'll get down to the slideshow presentation. Nope, that didn't work. JP is here and uh, a few other things I wanna talk about tonight. I wanna talk about yellow lights. Uh, a couple of people have had a <laughs> discussion with me about that and they think that yellow lights mean to proceed with caution when in fact, uh, yellow lights do not mean proceed with caution, especially when it comes to traffic lights. It means stop if it's safe to do so. It's the same thing as a green light. Many people think that a green light means go. Green light doesn't mean go. It only means go if the way is clear. Because remember, the right of way is never taken. The right of way is always given. So if you're proceeding through an intersection and there is a vehicle in the intersection, you can't go. Right? You're not going to drive into the other vehicle and uh, cause a crash. You're going to give way to that vehicle, driving defensively, driving smarter. So Trevor's here. Uh, Rich is here. I didn't pass my first road test. A lot of small mistakes then added up, causing me to fail. Sorry to hear that. That's unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> blessed, you're most welcome. Uh, blessed, I, meant, I have been meaning to send you an email, respond to your comment. I haven't responded to your comment yet. Yes, I will make a maintenance video. I will get that done before, oh my God, I, get, I hate to say this, but I'll get that done before Christmas because Christmas is only like seven weeks away. <laughs> so yes, I've been tardy, but I will get to that. Jesus is here. I've learned a lot with your videos. That's awesome. Uh, Sheldon is here. So let's uh, head over to the presentation here and we'll get going. So we'll back up here one slide. So freeway driving, we're talking about that tonight. For those of you who are new to Smart Drive Test, my name is Rick August. I was a licensed, uh, I became a licensed commercial driving instructor in 1997 in the province of Ontario. Then I went on, I became a driving instructor in Australia and then I became a licensed instructor here in British Columbia as well. Through the 1990s, I drove truck. Uh, earned my doctorate in legal history in 2006 from the University of Melbourne. While I was going to university in Australia, uh, I drove for Gre uh, Greyhound in one of the regional bus lines there as well. And if you want to know more about me and about the Smart Drive Test channel that I started in 2015, uh, go over to the YouTube channel or the Smart Drive Test website and check out my autobiography. Some interesting little anecdotes there and stories and whatnot. So. Check that out. New video this week. Uh, I'm going to change this thumbnail. This is one of those never ending tasks where this thumbnail just is not working for me. And it's not working for you either because people are not clicking on it. So, <laughs> uh, so we're gonna change the thumbnail again if you have any suggestions about this thumbnail. But definitely check out this video. Uh, if you wanna clean your car, you wanna be safer, you wanna have a recommendation for a dash cam, 
definitely check out this video and Corey will put up the uh, video for you. You can have, have a look at that. If you're looking for gift ideas for Christmas and those types of things, then definitely have a look at that. Faster speeds on highways. And Mallory asked the question, what is the difference between a highway and a freeway? Typically, freeways tend to be limited access highways, which means that there's only certain places that you can get on and off a freeway. And I figured that out when I was traveling along uh, uh, Interstate 90 in New York, <laughs> which is also a toll roll. And there's only certain places that you can get on and off Interstate 90 in the state of New York. And I had to drive half an hour to get down to the next exit and come back up, which is an hour out of your way by the time you get there. So limited access highways. Uh, so they don't have intersections. They have on ramps, off ramps, whereas highways will have intersections. So you have to uh, pay attention to interstates or intersections because people will be getting on and then they'll be accelerating from a dead stop. Whereas on a freeway, they will get up to speed and then they will merge over onto the highway. So look farther down the road when you're traveling at higher speeds, get the big picture and manage space well. Have a three to sec five second following distance around your vehicle. And I'll talk about clusters here in a little bit as well. So predicting road user behavior, where are people getting on and where are people getting off freeways? People are getting on at on ramps and off ramps and usually in combination with on ramps and off ramps, there's an overpass. So be looking for overpasses and then be scanning the on ramps and the off ramps when you're driving along freeways and interstates. Uh, people are going to be speeding most of the time when they do speed they're going to be out in the uh, left hand lane uh, the people that are going to be driving slower we hope we hope that are going to be in the right hand lane so predict traffic patterns on freeways if you go past the scale house know that they're going to be big trucks getting back on the roadway if you don't know what a scale house is this is where CDL vehicles have to go in and get weighed so they have to get off the freeway and then they have to get back on the freeway. So at the other end, once you go past the scale house, you might wanna see if you can get over into the left-hand lane to allow those big trucks to merge back onto the highway. Shoulder checking, hold your course. You need to shoulder check 90 degrees. And uh, I will talk about this again because I had somebody this week come on and leave a comment that they felt that it was dangerous <laughs> and they hadn't done it in 15 years. Oh, that just gives me just prickles the hair on the back of my neck when people say that they're not shoulder checking and they're driving. Okay, so mirror adjustment, if you are unable for whatever, you have a physical limitation or a disability, uh, please get convex mirrors so that you can check the blind areas around your vehicle before you move the vehicle sideways, move it laterally. So shoulder checking. Uh, cruise control, if you're doing some highway driving, it's a good idea to use cruise control because this is one of the things one of the technologies that's on your vehicle that will reduce distracted driving. And now most newer vehicles are going to have adaptive cruise control as well. They're going to have lane assist. Whereas if they detect that the vehicle is moving out of the lane, they will cause correction either through, you know, the, the steering wheel vibrating or there'll be some sort of audible warning that will tell you that the vehicle is moving and you simply need to bring it back into place. Now, a lot of people negate the fuel economy benefits of cruise control when passing other vehicles on freeways and highways. Uh, you don't have to turn it off and on. You can just leave it on and go past the vehicle and then move back over, okay? So know that uh, for the purposes of using cruise control. We can talk more about that, but I am thoroughly, thoroughly convinced that not only the benefits of you know a 20% increase in fuel economy, but also the reduction of distracted driving while you're going along the highway, interstate or freeway. So if you break down on the highway, you're away for Thanksgiving or those types of things, uh, these things do happen. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive to sign up for AAA or BCAA or uh, CAA, which is Canadian Automobile Association, where you can get towing if you do break down on the side of the road. But you also have to have a cell phone in your vehicle, make sure that you have a charger. I mean, most of us in this day and age are gonna have a charger and as well, the seven gift ideas, and one of the things that I do recommend is a charger that has a USB port on it. So if you're driving an older vehicle, you can pick that up and put it in your older vehicle. Okay, if you do break down on the side of the road and you have to move over to the side of the road, do put the hood up. That is the universal symbol that your vehicle is broken down. All right, so merging correctly. There's a whole playlist here and Corey will put up the playlist for us on merging correctly. Think of it like taking off in an airplane. Once that 
plane gets out on the runway and is lined up on the runway and hammer down, there is no backing off. It is the same with you. When you get on the on-ramp and then you get out onto the acceleration lane, it is hammer down and you need to be finding, locating your spot and aiming for that spot and merging out on the freeway. You cannot stop at the end of the on-ramp, okay? Despite what anybody says to you, no, no, no. You need to get into your foot into it and you need to get match the speed on the highway or freeway, get it up to speed and then merge out into the into traffic all right deceleration lane is the opposite you cannot slow down out on the highway because it's not safe you're running the risk of getting rear-ended so make sure that you're completely in the deceleration lane before you start slowing down when you're getting off a highway or a freeway if there is a deceleration lane but most limited access highways interstates freeways will have these deceleration lanes okay the other piece about uh, driving along highways and freeways is to stay out of the clusters. This is not a very good picture. I had a better picture, but I couldn't find it. It doesn't make any sense what I just said. I had a better picture, but I couldn't find it. So I didn't have a better picture. This is a terrible picture, but clusters. We've all been on highways. We've seen the clusters of vehicles. You want to stay out of the clusters of vehicles because if something happens in that cluster, it's a domino effect. It's going to be one car into another. And we've all seen those awful pileups on freeways where it's a bit foggy or a bit snowy and the traffic can't get stopped and they just plow into one another for, you know, what seems like a very, very long time. So three to five second following distance under ideal conditions. If road conditions deteriorate, the weather, the traffic, it becomes congested or whatnot, then you want to increase that following distance. But most important, you want to drive in the spaces between the clusters. And there's another video up here, five tips on highway driving, and Corey will put that up for you as well. So good luck in your road test, and remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. So get back over here, and we will spend the remainder of the hour answering any questions you have. Uh, Corey's put up that video about uh, managing space around your vehicle uh, to pass the driver's license test, awesome. Uh, Brandon, should you use cruise control while you're still learning or wait till after you get your license? Uh, Brandon, I would recommend that you learn how to use it after you get your license. It's not really a big deal. Uh, while you're learning, I mean, if you, if, you, if you started learning months before your driver's test, then yes, you can play around and learn how to use cruise control. But if you're <laughs> like most people who are learning how to drive and preparing for a driver's test and you kind of started kind of six to eight weeks before your test, then no, don't use it, okay? Yeah, Arnold there. <laughs> 15 years, no shoulder checking. Just remember, not shoulder checking when driving a car is the same thing as not checking to see if a weapon is loaded is, you know, what it is to gun safety. And, you know, unfortunately, we know what happened to Alec Baldwin because he didn't check a weapon. So make sure that you shoulder check because why would you be driving a two-ton vehicle at speed Move it sideways and not check to see whether there's somebody there, a bicycle, a cyclist, uh, a, a pedestrian, or some other road user, because you have to do that. You're moving the vehicle sideways. You're moving it laterally. You have to check over there to see if somebody's there. Now, on one and the same note with that, many driving instructors teach it wrong. They teach it like you got to look back there. If driving instructors or other authorities are saying to you, you have to look back there when you're shoulder checking, yes, that's wrong. It's 90 degrees, it's straight off your shoulder. That's why it's called a shoulder check or a head check. And it's a quick turn of the head. And the reason that it's 90 degrees is because in a healthy adult, peripheral vision is 180 degrees. So you're turning here. So you're already looking out there with peripheral vision. You're looking for something light or movement in that peripheral vision because our focus, our ability to see something at focus is a very small bit of space. Most of what we see is light and movement. And when we detect light and movement, then we go in for the, you know, the specific looking of what we're seeing. So know that it's just quick turn of the head, 90 degrees. That's all you need to do for shoulder checking. Fan, uh, if the vehicle is due for oil change, can we use it for a road test? Uh, fan, yeah, absolutely, you can use it for a road test. That's not a safety issue, okay? I mean, unless you blow the motor up because you didn't put any oil in it, but <laughs> if it's due for an oil change, that's not a safety issue, okay? 
Uh, Jim Bob, is there an emergency vehicle behind me and I'm on the highway? Should I pull over to the shoulder or change lanes and let it pass me? Uh, Jim Bob, if you're on a multi-lane road, now, this is, this, is, this is a tough question because this is one of those questions where do I follow the rules or do I do the right thing? And the right thing on a multi-lane road is to move over to the right and allow the emergency vehicle to pass you on the left. I have tried to get off the road on an interstate one time and I nearly got run off the road because people do not pull over on highways and interstates and freeways. So it's better just to move into the right lane and then allow the vehicle, the emergency vehicle to pass you on the left. All right. Uh, APIC uh, fan, must you go to the speed limit on the merging lane during the driving test? Yes, you must go the speed limit. So if the speed limit on the highway onto which you're merging is 100 kilometers an hour or it's 60, 65 miles an hour, you can't exceed that speed limit to merge out onto the highway or freeway. So make sure that if you have a highway or freeway that's very close to the DMV or the test center where you're taking your test, that you get out onto that merge lane or highway to practice merging onto the highway or freeway or interstate. It's not likely that the examiner is going to take you onto the interstate or freeway because they just don't have time. Most of the time, freeways and highways are a long ways away from the test center and they're just not going to take you out there. The other thing is, is that keep in mind that most tests, especially right now, as they're trying to catch up from the backlog of COVID, that by the time they take you on, on the interstate, they take you down to the next exit and then they come back around that's going to be a 35 minute driver's test and many of these DMVs simply don't have that amount of time. So my best advice to you if you're unsure whether they're going to take you on the highway or the interstate is to take a practice driving test with the local driving school and say hey are they going to take me down to the interstate or freeway and do, should I practice that because that's where you're going to find out that information. Uh, Tim, uh, BC nearest edge of the roadway that may be to the left. Yes, uh, <laughs> but the other thing ab about that, Tim, is, is that you're, you may be blocking the emergency vehicle because if you're on a multi-lane, for example, here on Highway 97 between Vernon and Kelowna, if I move to the nearest edge, which is the left, I there would be no room for the emergency vehicle to get past me, so I would have to move over to the right, okay? Uh, Mallory, what is a clover leaf off and on ramp? Uh, a clover leaf, Mallory, it just looks like a clover leaf from the air with all the on ramps and off ramps. And it's something in the states that they have. It's that's why it's called a clover leaf because when they when you look at it from the air, it looks like a stem on the main freeway with these four loops. That's why it's called a clover leaf. And uh, it's actually on the thumbnail that I put up on freeways there. Uh, one time flashing ambulance came coming from the left. They changed lanes to, to, to the left to let it merge to mine. Okay, uh, fan, I'm not uh, following what you're talking about there. Uh, Felicia, good evening, great teacher and everyone. Hello, Jesus, uh, is it necessary to go to road test with a uh, G full license? Yes, it is, Jesus, you need a mentor. You can't drive the vehicle. Uh, I mean, unless you're on your end or your probationary license where you can drive by yourself. But if you're on your learners and you're going to take your first test, then you have to take a licensed driving mentor with you. You can't uh, you can't go by yourself. But if you already if you're on your probationary phase of your GDL or your GLP, then yes, you can go to the test by yourself. Uh, Kimberly, my instinct is to stop when I'm trying to change lanes. What can I do to break this habit? Uh, Kimberly, you gotta you gotta speed up a little bit. Yeah, I know it's kind of a thing with new drivers, and you're not alone in this. Lots of new drivers want to slow down or stop when they're trying to change lanes and you can't. You actually have to speed up because you're covering more distance as you're moving from one lane to the other when you're, uh, uh, when you're changing lanes, okay? So you have to actually speed up a little bit. I'm not saying like a lot, but just like a couple of miles an hour, a couple kilometers an hour, okay? Uh, Tim, left lane moves left, right lane moves right. Emergency vehicle got up the middle. Uh, that Tim, that still will not work here on Highway 97 because you there is literally on the left side there's this there's this much of a shoulder 
there's a concrete barrier that runs down the middle and there's this much of a shoulder. So if, if I moved left, the, the emergency vehicle would actually have to go into the right lane to get past me. So this is again back to the, what I was saying before, do you, do, do you follow the rules or you do the best court, you, do you take the best action? And the best action in my mind is moving over to the right, regardless of what the, you know, what the regulation says. I understand what you're saying, that you know, on a multi-lane road, one moves left and one moves right, but that just on this on this road, <laughs> and I know there's lots of roads in BC that are like this. That's just not going to work. And also, wouldn't you wouldn't you agree? I'm asking if you would agree that a lot of times that would seem unpredictable. That would be contrary to what, like, if I was driving an emergency vehicle, what I'm thinking is I'm thinking that vehicles are going to move to the right if it's possible. And then I'm going to stay to the left. If I if I've got vehicles that start moving over to the left, then that's just going to cause a lot of confusion and a lot of unpredictable actions. That's just my thinking. Uh, Jones, can you renew your learner's permit before your permit expires? Uh, Mr. Jones, I don't know where that is. Uh, where are you in the world? Which state are you in? Okay, uh, APNIC, uh, are we allowed to use cruise control during the road test? No, do not, do not use cruise control for the purposes of your driver's test. Uh, Trevor, uh, there is a traffic light on my road test that sometimes gives an advanced green and other times just a green. How to approach it when it's just a green? Uh, like as you would a normal traffic light, Trevor. Okay, um... Use your signal and follow the signal. Okay, you must be, I think you're answering somebody else there. Um, excellent. Okay, so for those of you going for your driver's test, head over to the Smart Drive Test website. Check out Pass Your Driver's Test First Time Course Package. Guaranteed that you'll pass your driver's test first time as well. As a bonus, we throw in both the defensive and winter driving smart courses. And of course, we're almost on... <laughs> In winter here, so the winter driving course, winter driving smart course is going to significantly reduce your chances of being involved in a crash in the winter time. So check that out over at the Smart Drive Test website. Corey will put the link up for you there and you can head over there. Goose, how are you my friend? Uh, Mallory, are you talking about the divided highway like what we have here in Nova Scotia? Uh, what, I lost the train. There's some, There's a theme going on here. I'm not sure what we're talking about. Uh, you're in New York City. Okay, you're talking about use your signals and follow the signal. Okay, all right. So in province of British Columbia, move left if you're on near closest to the left side. Although I disagree with that. I'm just going to say that. It, you know, predictability in terms of traffic is that you're going to move right. You're going to try and slow down to allow the emergency vehicles to go into the left lane because as well, the other thing about the left lane is the left lane is considered the hammer lane and that's where I would expect an emergency vehicle to go. And there is no room on Highway 97 here between Vernon and Kelowna that you can pull over to the left. So you have to move over to the right if the shoulder of the road does not permit you to move over to the left. River, uh, practice constant shoulder checking in downtown Boston at night and raining this past weekend. My passenger and I felt safer, especially with pedestrians and cyclists all over the road. And yes, you will, River, and I cannot stress how much I appreciate you shoulder checking and learning how to drive correctly because, you know, you, you need to do that. You're moving, you have a vehicle that's really dangerous, especially to vulnerable road users, as you just said, with pedestrians and cyclists and those types of things. Uh, Kimberly, I bought the package, but still feel extremely nervous about taking my test again tomorrow. Uh, Kimberly, you're going to do awesome. Just remember to breathe. That will cause your body to relax. Okay. It'll force your body to relax. So just, and remember the more, four most powerful words in the English language. I can do this. I'm going to pass. So visualize the wind and drop back and let us know how it goes. Alicia, <laughs> you're impressed by the Ruse Meyer. A reference. Yes, well, you know, that's a great movie. Faster, faster, Pussycat. Uh, Jacob, thank you. You helped me pass. That's awesome. Congratulations, Jacob. We're so happy that we could help out to get you to pass and earn your driver's license. Really, really awesome. Okay. Uh, Goose, how are things in Sudbury? 
Uh, okay, so uh, Mr. Jones, I would need to look that up for you in terms of your learner's permit in terms of uh, renewing it before it expires. There may be some con concessions there in the state of New York that they will allow you to uh, renew your license, but I'm not sure about that. I you would have to check in or I would need to check in with the DMV. And if anybody else knows here on the live stream or somebody watching on the replay, if you know that, that would be really great. Uh, Felicia, okay, thank you. Alicia, I, haven't, I have, haven't driven in 23 years and feel like I'm learning all over again. Your videos have really helped. That's awesome, glad we can help out, Alicia. Uh, Goose, if you're in the left lane and can't safely make a right turn, change and pull over to the right can you legally and safely pull over into the double left turning lane if there is one there uh so goose you basically you know what we've been having the discussion about emergency vehicles is if you, exactly if you can't get over to the right you have to get over to the left you have to clear a path for emergency vehicles and now we're on this uh, at intersections, sometimes you can't move and at the intersections, oftentimes it's better just to stay where you are because if you're stopped and traffic on the other side of the road is stopped, then the emergency vehicle is just going to go around on the left and move through the intersection. Or in one case, uh, they're going to move through the slip lane and they're going to come around. But they, as long as traffic is stopped, the driver of the emergency vehicle, the EMS, can move through and get around and do the things that he or she needs to do. Uh, Excellent, okay. Uh, Baskaran, you passed your driver's test. Congratulations on passing your driver's test. Thank you so much for dropping back and letting us know. That's awesome. Uh, Makota, how long is the test in North America? Uh, Makota, it depends where you're taking your driver's tests. Uh, in larger metropolitans, it's gonna be shorter. Uh, depending on how much time examiners have at some of the smaller test centers, it's gonna be a bit longer and whatnot but it really depends on where you're taking your driver's test. Uh, some of the places in New York City, for example, are going to be really short. It's gonna be like five to eight minutes. And in other places, you know, some of the more rural settings, you know, in the country and smaller towns and those types of things, it's gonna be, you know, can be up to 35 or 40 minutes, depending on the examiner, how much time he or she has. Uh, fan, when do we honk at other drivers? Uh, fan, as a rule, in this day and age, you don't really honk at other drivers because it's seen as a sign of aggression. Uh, if you need to get another driver's attention, for example, if he or she's sitting at the light and uh, the light turns green and they're not going, then you might wanna tap the horn just to say, hey, you know, the light's green, let's go here. Or uh, if you're trying to get the attention of a cyclist or a pedestrian or somebody else that you don't think has seen you, then you can just like tap the horn to get their attention so that they see you and are aware of you there and those types of things because you know if you're traveling along a residential street or something like that and they don't see you uh then you you want to get their attention so they can see you okay my friend sam is here big mac sam how are you sam uh it's <laughs> it's got busy tonight and uh, we got we got into a discussion about emergency vehicles and off to the right and those types of things. So near a shoulder if you can, but sometimes you can't, and sometimes you 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 know the road just the the, the physical dimensions of the road don't allow it. So it's always best to go to the right. To therefore you're going to be predictable. Okay, Alicia. Okay, uh, it takes anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes on average, and I would agree with that. Kind of 10 to 15 minutes. My friend Colin, uh, for some reason, always runs her car out of gas. What can I buy for her so she does not run out of gas? Uh, <laughs> Colin, there isn't anything you can do about that. She's just going to have to learn not. And I mean, in this day and age, it's pretty tough to run your car out of gas because now we have a low warning, uh, low gas warning light in our vehicle, which tells us that it's going to run out of gas. When that light comes on, uh, most vehicles, I think, according to regulation, they're supposed to be able to travel 60 kilometers before they run completely out of fuel. But you got to, you know, when the light comes on, it's time to put fuel in the vehicle. And, uh, you know, it's just as easy to keep the top half full as it is to keep the bottom half full. But, you know, that's not everybody. So there you go. Uh, Brandon, when an emergency vehicle approaches, do you need to actually come off the road a bit 
to make room or just pull as far to the right side to the side as possible Brandon it depends whether you're in town or whether you're out on a highway or a freeway it's going to depend on the configuration of the road you know if you're in town you're not going to be able to get much off the road because there's really going to be just your lane of traffic and then there's going to be a sideways sidewalk so you're going to have to pull over to the nearest shoulder as quickly as possible that that you're able to and to make way for the emergency vehicle to move through and again as i was saying previously if you just come to a stop and move to the right as much as possible or move to the left if that works out then the emergency vehicle can make their way through the traffic all right uh colin it literally happened this afternoon <laughs> Colin, you're just going to have to get yourself a jerry can when your friend calls you that they're out of fuel, just go and fill up the jerry can and go and put some fuel in their vehicle. It's a good thing they're not driving a diesel because uh, diesel vehicles, you can't just put fuel in them and start them up. You often you have to get them primed to get them going again. So there you go. Uh, Ibram, uh, what can you do if you have no GPS and are on a highway? Uh, you got to go old school with a map. Uh, and uh, the other thing you can do, and Corey will put up the video on navigation and route planning. You'll have to do some route planning and navigation before uh, you get out onto the road. Um, so, uh, Colin, you're asking you're asking me as a road. I'm not a person who works in the psychology of people and why they run their vehicles out of fuel. I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know uh, why they would want to sit on the side of the road letting their vehicle run out of fuel. I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, fan, how do we tell other drivers to switch off their high beams? Uh, fan, sometimes you can't. I mean, you can flash your lights, but that creates another dangerous situation. Often the best thing to do is if you're driving at night on a highway and somebody's coming at you with high beams, it's best to look down at the fog line so you don't get blinded. And then when they go past, because it's it's a very short period of time before they go past, uh, and that way you're going to protect your night vision when you're driving. But unfortunately, it's going to happen. It does happen. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, she doesn't run out of gas. What to buy for her? How about a membership to a dojo? LOL. <laughs> Oh, this went goofy with the running out of gas. I mean, you know, it's it's probably something to do with youth as well. Because, I mean, when I was young, I used to run the vehicle out of fuel. Oh, it'll go. And, you know, that kind of optimism bias. But, I mean, I, I'm older now and that just doesn't happen. I just fill the vehicle up. If I get to a quarter of a tank, I fill it up. So, you know, but when I was younger, yeah, ran out of fuel a lot. <laughs> uh uh, Walter, I've been driving for five months just with a driving permit and the cops have never pulled me over. Is it safe to do so? Uh, so Walter, you're driving with your learners. Is that what you're doing? And if that's what you're doing and that's what you're asking me, no, it's not safe to just drive with your learners because you're breaking the law. You're, you need to be driving with a fully licensed driver. <laughs> Uh, Mick Mac, hey Rick, in highway, the limit here in Colorado is 65 miles an hour, but some are doing more than 65 miles an hour. Do I need to go with the flow of traffic and match their speed? Uh, Mick Mac, are you preparing for your driver's test or not? Uh, Kimberly, this chat is off the rails tonight. <laughs> yes, it is, Kimberly. Alicia, uh, it's only legal if you're driving with a licensed driver in the car. Yes, when you have a learner's. That's exactly right, Alicia. Uh, fan, my car tires fell flying on the 401. Yeah, okay, that's cr crazy talk now. <laughs> Sam, you are actually younger than I am, which is, you know, absolutely goofy. Uh, there we go. You wait, you just, Sam's got that baby face. He, he looks like he's 35. <laughs> Uh, Bluffer, wouldn't Octane Booster be a good thing for them? Uh, Octane Booster? I don't think Octane Booster is going to put any more fuel in your fuel tank when you run it empty. <laughs> and the other thing about running your fuel tank empty, okay, uh, all new vehicles. Here's the other thing about running your fuel tank empty. Uh, all new fuel, all new cars have the fuel pump in the fuel tank. It's actually the fuel that cools the fuel pump and lubricates it. 
what happens is, is when you run your fuel tank down below a quarter tank the fuel sloshes around and exposes the fuel pump and when the fuel pump is exposed it runs hot and you will prematurely burn out the fuel pump in your car when you run the fuel low in the vehicle okay so you can't do that because <laughs> it uh, replacing a fuel pump is very expensive like 500 to a thousand dollars so that's the other thing you could tell your friend is, is that it's going to cost him or her a lot of money because they're running the fuel low in the tank all right okay uh micmac i'm not i passed my exam six months ago okay so micmac if you passed your exam six months ago uh, my recommendation is to keep up with traffic flow because that makes you more predictable on the roadway. That's my personal thing. I cannot say, hey, you need to do this because I can't say that because then you'd be breaking the law, but it is safer. It is, uh, you are more predictable on the roadways. Okay. And the handbooks in kind of a roundabout way is, as well say that you should keep up with traffic flow. Thanks for the little pep talk of running a vehicle out of gas. This just made my night. <laughs> well, Colin, I'm happy we can help out. I'm not really sure whether your friend, that's going to, you know, stop your friend from running the vehicle out of fuel or not. But anyway, we'll see what we can do. Uh, Goose Octane Juice, hello, remind, reminds me of a health store here called Booster Juice. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, you know, while you're getting Octane Juice to fill up the fuel tank, make sure you, uh, you know, fill up that blinker fluid too, right? And change the oil in the supercharger. <laughs> Uh, Tim, good night, my friend. Uh, steak au pouvoir tonight. Oh, that sounds very yummy. Can I come to your house for dinner, Tim? I would really like to come for that. Ooh, that sounds good. Uh, Big Mac Sam, I have to talk to you, Rick. I'll email you. Okay, for sure. Uh, Mick Mac, you're welcome. That is awesome. So, Crystal, where did Crystal? Where's Crystal? Crystal, Crystal, Crystal. Don't see Crystal. Oh, there's Crystal. I am now officially a black belt. I tested for it yesterday in the past. I've been doing karate since I was four years old, so my 15 years of doing karate have paid off. My driving practice is still good. Congratulations, Crystal, on getting your black belt. That is no small feat. <laughs> as I continue to get beat up in jujitsu, uh, as you may or may not know, Jiu-Jitsu is probably the longest path to getting a black belt. For a lot of people, it's like 10 to 20 years to get a black belt in Jiu-Jitsu. So, you know, I just want a color belt in Jiu-Jitsu. Once I get a color belt, then it'll just be like, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. All right. Fan, can we use right or left shoulder of the highway to pass other vehicles? No, you cannot use the shoulder of the road to pass other vehicles. You have to stay on the traveled portion of the roadway. Uh, Walter, I try to avoid highways at all costs because I have the feeling that I'm not going to merge correctly and crash. Uh, Walter, one of the things that I would suggest to you, don't avoid highways because eventually you're going to have to drive on highways. And after a little while, you're going to go, wow, highways are awesome. Because they are awesome. They are truly awesome. You simply, the key to driving well on highways is simply managing space around your vehicle. Keep that three to four second following distance because... Remember that the reason we measure following distance in time is that time, that speed is relative, right? So in town, when we're doing approximately 50 kilometers an hour, we're, doing, we're following at 27 meters per second, which is approximately 100 feet per second, right? But when we're out on the highway, now we're at 40 meters per second or something around. This is all approximations. Now it's 200 feet per second. So we've, in, we've doubled our following distance okay so know that so as speed increases following distance increases this is why we measure following distance in time okay goo says he prefers aikido aikido uh yes i started out with aikido for a few months before i went to karate and now i'm in jujitsu and uh yeah they're all they all have merits for sure jp just wanted to say big thanks for your videos and the smart drive ter uh, driver package been watching for two years with an L and passed on my road test first try at ICBC in Willowbrook Langley got my N yes driving on my own that is awesome JP congratulations and so happy we could help out with the smarter driver course package over at the smart drive test website guaranteed to pass first time as well we throw in the winter driving and defensive driving smart courses 
Pick that up for about $37 US over at the Smart Drive Test website. So that is absolutely awesome news. Uh, Max, are Nissan Altimas a good, reliable car in your opinion? Yes, I believe they are. I would uh, look up some of the information here on the internet in terms of Nissan Altimas, but for what I've heard, Nissans are good cars, and I have driven uh, some of them that are that were owned, belonged to friends of mine, and I, I did like them. I did like driving them, so yes, good vehicle. Sam, I want to see that picture you took of the street signs hanging on your wall. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Sam, oh my God, last week was so crazy. It has been crazy since I got home. It's just like everything has taken off. Oh my God, okay. And what did I say? What am I on record as saying? Am I on record as saying that TikTok was not gonna last more than three years because both Instagram and YouTube were going after it? Guess, guess what I did today? I am now officially, the Smart Drive Test channel is now officially on TikTok. There we go. Share it around social media. We're doing shorts. We're doing vertical video. We're running the test. <laughs> I came back from the conference in New York State in October. Nobody talked about vertical video. Nobody talked about shorts. Nobody talked about TikTok. Nobody talked about reels on Instagram. And I thought, here we go. I this is this is where I need to go. So I am posting one vertical video every day for 365 days. And I started in October, and I'll let you know next year in October how that has paid dividends for me. So we'll see what happens here. And so far, so good. Okay, and if you have any suggestions about the shorts on YouTube or anything over at TikTok, that would be awesome. Arnold. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Arnold, TikTok is goofy, Rick. You have officially become goofy. Well, I, I was already goofy long before I got to TikTok, so. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yes, Sam, it was an absolute awesome opportunity to meet you as well. I was, you know, I almost had a video editor this week. We are looking for a video editor here on the Smart Type Drive Test channel here as well. So that's the other thing I need and got to, yeah, I got to get that going. Uh, yeah, Sam, there we go. Uh, fan, is it recommended to fuel your car with premium gas? Uh, it depends on who you talk to, uh, fan, about premium gas. My brother, who's an auto mechanic, puts premium gas in every motor he has. Every, his lawnmower, every car he drives, those types of things. And he convinced me to put premium gas in my vehicle too, and it does run better, but it is considerably more expensive. So that is one of the things you need to consider when you're putting premium fuel in your vehicle. David, uh, practice up until road 100 days right today. 100 days, you're going to do what you practice for road on. Uh, to shoulder checks, she watching. Okay, I'm not following all of that, but there you go. Hope your first snowfall was smoother than Winnipeg's. <laughs> Did you get a lot of snow in Winterpeg, Kiori? Because, <laughs> uh, you know, getting a lot of a big dump of snow for the first snow of the year can really just throw a wrench into everything. Uh, Bricks for Wheels barely had any come down. Reported to have freezing rain in the morning. Oh, yeah, there you go. Freezing rain. Awesome. Uh, Bluffer, that's good because people who are getting their L's are also on TikTok most likely. Awesome. Thank you for that encouragement, Bluffer, as on, uh, as opposed to some of the other people who are saying that it's goofy. <laughs> but with, time will tell. Time will tell. There we go. Okay. Uh, Colin, from emergency vehicles to running out of gas to talking about TikTok, what is happening tonight on here? Oh yeah, well it's 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 goofy. Uh, Crystal, also I'm going on vacation on Tuesday to see my family in San Antonio, so I may or may not join your live stream videos next Sunday. Well, you're in the right place, Crystal, for driving well. Have a look at the freeway driving videos. Uh, how far is it to San Antonio from where you live? Okay, it's easy in snow. <laughs> <laughs> Sam says, TikTok is goofy. Never mind. Yeah, TikTok is goofy. I, I actually looked at some of the other videos and I am not, uh, not going to disagree with that statement a whole lot. 
Okay, Micmac, I use 91 on my Forester Sport. It's cheaper if I get it in at Sam's Club. There you go, okay. So yeah, 91 is a good fuel. Uh, there you go. Uh, words of wisdom for passing your driver's test first time. Brandon, we got snow in Ohio today. Not only to only enough to cover the grass, but not the road. And Brandon, where are you in the Buckeye there? Uh, where do you live? Arnold, you have some brickhead drinking gasoline for viewers on TikTok, but I wish you the best on TikTok. Hopefully you gain more attraction on it. Uh, yeah, dr drinking fuel. Awesome. Uh, not No, that's really not awesome. Uh, it was called smart laugh test. <laughs> that's, a, that's a possibility. You know, I'm easily amused. What can I say? What can I say? So, uh, yeah, there's there's people who are willing to do some odd things to get views on videos. Uh, Mick Mac, share Rick's channel with your friends. I failed twice on my road test and I found out about his channel. And Rick helped me a lot to pass on my third try. And that is absolutely awesome. Thank you for that endorsement, Mick Mac. I'm so happy that we could help you out to get your license on the third go there. Uh, that's what we we're definitely here for. So... Uh, Corey said, yes, a big dump of snow with uh, zero degrees, slushy, but icy road conditions for most of the week. Uh, yeah, lots of yuck. <laughs> we haven't had snow here. Lots of rain, but we haven't had any snow here uh, in British Columbia yet. Uh, Rick, are you ever going to film any drone shots? Uh, yes, I have drone shots, uh, Sam. My camera guy, Kevin, Kevin, Gavin, has a drone, and actually... Uh, if you look at the video on hill parking, we actually did some drone shots for the hill parking video. So Corey will put that up for you and we did some drone shots on that. So have a look there uh, for those drone shots. Uh, the other thing that we're gonna be doing, which I'm working on, so many things to work on. The class one pre-trip inspection, the truck video, there's also some drone shots on that, but that's more in the driving portion of it. So there's some drone shots for that. And also I've been doing some safety videos for one of my customers, one of my clients, and we did drone shots with them as well. I really like the drone shots, some really good stuff you can uh, show with uh, from an aerial view, really good. Uh, Mallory, it is turning out to be a very interesting night here on the live stream. <laughs> well, at least it's not boring. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Brandon, I live in Columbus, real nice city, though I have been unreasonably honked at a couple of times. Yeah, Brandon, that's pretty much go, gonna go for any large city, you know, regardless of whether you're in Columbus or whether you're in Dayton or you're in Cincinnati or, you know, those are all Ohio cities or you're in Pittsburgh or, you know, Cincinnati, uh, not Cincinnati, <laughs> Boston, all of those places you're gonna get honked at. So, uh, Sam. Oh, thanks for letting me know on the drone shots. Yep, so we're we're adding more drone shots in uh, to help people out. Uh, Goose, we had some hailstones, wind, and also a bit of fire here yesterday. Fire? Sydney, not Sydney. Sudbury is on fire. On fire. The whole world wasn't on fire, was it? Well, the whole province of British Columbia was on fire in the summertime. Uh, and if you don't know that, that line is from Plains 2. <laughs> and if you haven't seen it, that's a funny movie too. There's some funny bits in it. Uh, ben, when right turners have a slip lane with a yield sign, do left turners from the other direction have to give the right of way? Okay, so turning right, turning left. The only caution with that, Ben, is, is that try not to, with a well, vehicle's turning left and another vehicle is coming out of the slip lane to turn right, don't turn in beside the other vehicle. Turn in the spaces either in front or in behind the other vehicle. So turn into the spaces beside the other vehicles. Don't turn in beside another vehicle. And actually, <laughs> I was editing some videos today and uh, one of the clips that I saved on my dash cam was that I was doing that. I was coming out on the slip lane to make a right and the truck is coming around to make the left and the left turning, it's a Super B fully loaded. So this, this huge truck weighs 140,000 pounds, 63,500 kilograms. And it's coming around on the left. And as soon as it came around on the left and I did, I pulled in behind it, I slowed down on purpose to pull in behind him. 
and as soon as he come around on the left, he just just drifted right over to the right. Had I had I merged in beside him, he would have splatted me. And I have it on dash cam, so I'll put that up on one of my new TikTok videos. Yeah, smart drive test on TikTok. It's just got a, it's got a kind of a catchy ring to it, right? Even though people are doing goofy things on TikTok, it sounds cool. Okay. Uh, blessed. Sorry, Rick, I missed the answer. Can you put a gas container in your car? Uh, yes, you can put a gas container in your car, Blessed, but make sure you keep the windows down because it is going to stink. <laughs> yeah, and don't leave it in the hot sun. <laughs> Think of it like puppies and children. Don't leave it in the car in the hot sun with the windows rolled up because, wow, the odor is incredible. You can put it in there, but just know it's going to stink, okay? So keep the windows rolled down. Keep it in there for the shortest amount of time you can and get, get it back out because it's going to smell, okay? Uh, goose, be like a zipper when you're turning left or right. Never turn at the same time beside another vehicle. Absolutely, yes. Turn into the spaces beside the other vehicles. Uh, Sam, I grew up in Passaic, New Jersey, Golden State. And I did not say that right, did I, Sam? I'm going to have to look that up. That's one thing I like about the internet now. If you don't know how to say a word or you don't know how to say a city, you can just like click the little audio icon. It's very cool. Very, very cool. Uh, all right, so you guys are having a conversation outside of me. Uh, Makota. Are North American trucks equipped with retarders or just the Jake? Also, what are the requirements for signing up for CDL school? Like how many years are you supposed to be a full license? It's not a full license. You do have to have a full license, but most CDL programs, you have to be 21 years of age to go for a full tractor trailer license. <clears throat> and yes, most trucks in North America do have Jake brakes. It's an engine retarder and Jake brake is like Kleenex. It's a it's the brand name, but it is an engine retarder. Uh, Sam, I hate the smell of gasoline. <laughs> My sister loves it. Yeah, I know. There's some people who are like that. It's very weird. Some people really like the smell of gasoline. But gasoline in a car, whew, smelly, smelly. It's like kerosene or paint thinner. Uh, diesel fuel. Diesel fuel is the worst. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, okay. Mex, uh, what's your opinion on getting a backup camera as a new driver? Do you think it's beneficial? Uh, do you think it's a bad idea? Uh, personally, I like backup cameras. Uh, if you, I wouldn't get one retrofitted, but I do really like them. I think they're really a really awesome technology. So that's my opinion on uh, backup cameras. And as well, Corey will put the video up for you on backup cameras for the purposes of a driver's test. Uh, Garden State, uh, smart drive test. You taught me how to drive manual transmission two years ago and that is awesome we're so glad that we can help you drive manual transmission because driving manual is awesome <laughs> and there's also paddle shifters are pretty nice too because we put paddle shifters in a very fast car <laughs> ah, epic older freeways found in the united states in urban areas like allentown and los angeles lack an acceleration lane therefore you must yield to traffic on the freeway then go newer ones have a lane yeah those older ones with the merge lane and the deceleration lane as one thing or not even having a acceleration lane yes those are beginning to go the way of the dodo bird thank the powers that be because they're extremely dangerous but they are beginning to go the way of the dodo bird but they are there every now and again and especially epic the other place that you'll find those with no acceleration lane is the parkways in new york state if you get on some of the parkways and you come out to get merge onto the parkway there's no acceleration lane there you got to come out stop and then you got to find a gap and then you got to proceed so that's the other place uh goose by the way rick great shorts not sure if that's even appropriate to congratulate you on no that is awesome feedback goose because i know that <laughs> to keep going with the little shorts and vertical videos that i'm doing and those types of things i'm going to try and switch them up and make you know every now and again have a bit of a funny in there as Colin was saying before about smart drive, smart laugh test. Yeah, we're going to have a few of those too and try and keep it light. Uh, David, driving school practice is up until road tests uh, right now. Uh, if you wanted to know how to practice shoulder checks, Colorado, those types of things. Awesome. So yes, great. <clears throat> so Garden State, yes, New Jersey too in the Garden State parkways. They also have some of those parkways and highways that don't have acceleration lanes. 
Mr. Jones, what can you do when your brakes stop working while you're on the road? What do you do to try not get into an accident? Okay, so Mr. Jones, first, uh, it's very unlikely that your brakes are going to fail completely. It's almost nigh impossible because the braking system on the cars have been divided into two independent subsystems since the late 1960s. So the front is separate from the rear. So if one fails, the other will continue to work normally. So it's very unlikely that you do. In the event that the brakes do fail with the brake pedal, then you can pull up on the parking brake and you will manually apply the brakes and you can bring the vehicle to a safe stop, okay? Uh, that's essentially what you need to do for the purposes of if your brakes are failing, but it's not likely that they're going to fail. Uh, Sam, when I lived in New Jersey, I thought New Yorkers were crazy drivers. Now that I live in New York, I think that New Jersey... <laughs> New Jersey drivers are crazy. And that's exactly what happens in the world is we think other people are always crazy drivers. And that's what happens. <laughs> it's the story. I was going to tell you a story. Oh, I was going to tell you a story about the diesel fuel. So, yes, diesel fuel, the smell of diesel fuel. So I was driving truck. This was back in the 90s when I was driving truck and you would get into the fuel pump and because you know you got huge fuel tanks on these big highway tractors that hold 300 gallons of fuel 150 gallons of fuel per side so you pull into the pumps and you got one pump on one side and you stick it into the tank and then you walk around the other side and you turn on the slave pump and you stick the fuel pump into the tank on the passenger side of the truck and so i did that put the one in the driver's side, walked around, put the one in the passenger side, and I got the two going. And of course, these are high volume diesel pumps because you're filling up a 150 gallon tank, right? Walk back around the driver's side. Just as I walked around the driver's side of the truck, I saw the fuel pump falling out of the tank. And just, I just went to reach for the fuel pump just as it came out of the tank. And of course, I put my hand on it and the thing just like, covered me in diesel fuel like four or five gallons of diesel fuel before i got the stupid thing shut off clicked off and i'm like dripping in diesel fuel standing at the fuel pumps i mean it's not terrible but you are covered in diesel fuel and there was you know a couple of reels of paper towel pulling it off trying to get it off and then of course <laughs> there was no way that i was going to go in the truck because i've had a little sprinkling of diesel fuel in the truck where you sleep and it's just will drive you mad and of course so i get undressed <laughs> in the parking lot you know i think i stripped to the waist because you know i still have my pants on and then i went in i left the truck at the pumps and i just went in and had a shower and i just like took the clothes and like immediately put them right in the laundry because fortunately the truck stop that i did sh stop at was one of the bigger flying jays and it had a shower and it had some laundry there as well, you know, some laundry facilities so I could just throw my clothes into the laundry facilities. And But just diesel fuel anywhere on you and sitting in a truck for a long period of time is very gross, very gross. So we were talking earlier about putting jerry cans in your car. No, no, <laughs> there we go. Uh, Mallory, why do they call the fog line the fog line? It's called the fog line because in fog, uh, sometimes you can't see very well, but you can always see down at that fog line on the right hand side So that'll help you to navigate and keep your vehicle on the road when you're driving in fog at night or in other Reduced visibility types of conditions and whatnot uh, Max how serious of an issue is it when your power steering uh, liquid starts to leak is that an immediate issue? Uh, to have it fixed. Uh, no if your power steering pump starts leaking a little bit it's not a huge deal but i would get in and try and get it fixed as quickly as possible all right so we're just about at the top of the hour here uh blessed i've been putting unleaded gas in my fit is it okay to switch to premium uh blessed absolutely it is absolutely fine to, to switch to premium if you want to do that you may also find that it runs better with uh, that premium fuel in it as well uh garden aha uh -huh, okay I think I've answered everybody's question. Sarah, what do you need to do before you get your license? How much practice do you recommend having? Uh, what videos do you recommend? Uh, Sarah, Corey will put up the video uh, playlist for you on passing your driver's test first time. And I recommend kind of six to eight weeks starting to practice and driving before your driver's test. 
and practicing specifically for your driver's test, okay? So again, check out Pastor Driver's Test First Time Course Package over at the Smart Drive Test website. You can pick that up for about 38 bucks US. And of course, Black Friday is coming. There's going to be a Black Friday sale as well. So look for that as well. And thank you for the great discussion tonight. If you've passed your driver's test in the last couple of weeks, congratulations on passing your driver's test. You have a driver's test coming up this week. Good luck on that. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.